if you've been around the channel, you know what to expect at this point. I play a random online blitz game. I think, huh, that was pretty cool. Maybe people on the internet are going to want to watch it. And so that's what today's game is. And the ending is wild. It is wild. The thumbnail and the title, they're not really an exaggeration. I was like, bro, I was celebrating like crazy after I won that game. And normally I just show no emotion in general. Like I'm such an emotionless guy. But after this game, like, whoa, I was a happy man. We get possibly one of the most boring openings in the world, some English opening. I tried to play it like a Nimzo Indian, which I've been trying to get into recently. Because previously I've been playing King's Indian. And at this level, it just isn't very viable anymore. Because everyone knows how to stop the king side attack. So my opponent, again, chooses a really boring line. Like a Catalan-esque structure. And I go, okay, let's challenge this bishop on the long diagonal. My opponent isn't playing d4 to allow bishop to b4 check, which is a typical Nimzo Indian idea. So I just bring the bishop to e7, bishop b2, castle, castle, and here I go knight e4. My opponent plays d3, and honestly I didn't even consider d3, because normally the pawn's on d4, so the knight can just slot into e4 really well. And, I mean, I spent literally zero seconds on this move i gained two seconds i played it instantly i kind of just missed e3 and then i was like huh i don't really want to drop it back because i want to put my bishop on this diagonal to challenge his bishop and i don't want to bring it to d6 or c5 because it's going to get booted around by pawns on c5 and d6 just blocks up my position so i thought let's go knight g5 and my idea is knight takes, bishop takes, king takes, bishop takes. I'm going to play bishop f6. I'm going to trade these bishops off. And I'm going to get an easy game, right? I'm, I'm playing black. I'm not looking for that much. But knight g5 is a mistake. Because after knight takes g5, bishop takes g2. I just completely missed knight takes e6. Now, I'd only actually looked at knight, h, knight takes h7, because I was like, oh, I can just take the rook, and after my opponent takes my rook, I mean, I can probably just retreat my bishop, and this knight's trapped, and I'm all good. I'm probably winning. So, my opponent is going to have to just do this, and then I'm happy. But, yeah, I just completely missed knight takes e6 which attacks my queen i wasn't worried about my rook being attacked but i missed that my queen could be under attack so here i was like okay this doesn't work because my queen hangs i'm just gonna have to be a pawn down i'm gonna take with the f pawn to get the f file open i love how that's a great move just taking a bishop like okay um and maybe i'll get some counter play right so I just develop, my opponent develops. I play queen e8, trying to get my queen over to the king side because my plan is to shove this h pawn down the board to try and take advantage of g3 being played. It's known as a hook, which gives me an opportunity to open up lines against my opponent's king. If the pawn was on g2, that wouldn't be possible. And I'm going to try and double rooks up, maybe bring my knight in somehow. My bishop, it, I'd love to get it to c5, but d4 or e3 just completely shut it out. So e4 is played, which I was happy to see because it left a hole on d4. I was much more concerned about it going to e, e3. But my opponent's idea is to play f4. The computer likes it because it takes a lot of space, right? My opponent has a very... Um, What's the word? It's like commanding position. But h5 threatens h4. My opponent responds well with king h1. Here I can't really play h4 because after takes takes, there's rook g1 and my queen's under attack and g7 falls. So I go bishop f6. 
here I spent a whole minute. This is a three minute game. I spent a minute because I was like, what do I do? This does not work. That was my whole idea. I could double up, but that's not getting me anywhere. And the problem is, my pieces can't advance into the position because this bishop takes up so much of the board. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to trade bishops. His bishop is way too strong. I'm down a pawn, I know, but I have no choice. And here, I was really, really hoping my opponent wouldn't take. If he takes, I take with the rook, I double up, maybe I get my knight to d4 if I'm lucky. I mean, I'm, I'm still down a pawn, but there's chances. I wanted him to play e5, and that's exactly what he played. And here I was really happy, because I just dropped my bishop back. And h4 works now, because say he plays a3, h4, there, there, rook g1. Not only does d3 hang... But um, actually, let's just have queen e2, which is what was played. h4, takes, takes, rook here. I move to queen 2 square, like h6. There is no rook takes g7, because his bishop is now cut off. His bishop is a far worse piece because e5 has been played. So, I drop my bishop back, queen e2, h4. And instead of allowing my plan, my opponent goes g4. But I was like, hmm, this is kind of weak. Now, if he was threatening moves like f5, it would be a problem. But he isn't, because I have three defenders, oh my god, of the f5 square. And he only has two. He's going to have to work hard to make f5 work. And in the meantime, I can play rook f7. Only move in this position. Everything else is bad, because... Well, rook f2 is a bad move. I was expecting knight e4 because the knight takes up a really commanding outpost. I can't kick the knight out easily. I'm going to play rook um, a to f8 to try and gang up on this pawn. But it's difficult to defend it, you know. Maybe queen g2 keeps an eye on every... Well, no, queen g2 doesn't work. Yeah, the problem is the queen's defending g4 and she can't defend f4 at the same time so the computer wants to play f5 to sacrifice the pawn to get knight f6 what oh you can't take with the pawn because of rook g1 okay well no one's ever gonna see that in a million years <laughs> so <laughs> that's insane no one's seeing that so it makes sense that my opponent plays rook f2, because he's like, I need to defend this pawn, because the pawn can't advance. My queen is tied down to the defense of g4, so I need to do something. I was expecting h3 here, and after I double up my opponent to play a move like queen e3 to defend the pawn. But even here, apparently there's moves like knight b4, and I'm good. Because d3 hangs. And he can't defend d3 easily. Knight e4 cutting off the queen. Knight c2 and I'm winning the exchange. So it's a tough position. It's really not easy. Rook f2 makes sense. Because after rook a to f8. Rook a to f1. He defends the pawn. But here. Begins this five move sequence I was on about. In the title and the thumbnail but I need to find all these moves and it's the only way that I bring the game back everything else loses basically and my opponent can just claim his extra pawn and just be better he starts with bishop c5 attacking the rook and d4 is not playable because I have too many defenders of d4 so rook f3 has to be played to maintain the defense of f4 but this allows queen takes g4 because the queen's connection to the g pawn has been cut off so now we're equal material and f4 is hanging my opponent plays queen e4 defending f4 
now I can't take it because he has three defenders to my three attackers. You need more attackers than defenders, obviously. And here, I think this is a, a bit of a better place to pause. Here, I really need to find this third move that kind of like seals the deal and makes it a winning position for black. So I'd encourage you to try and find it. I have 30 seconds at this point as well. So this was really difficult. But the move is h3. I spent half my time on h3 because I knew this was a critical position. And the point is, this bishop and queen, they're really lining up on the g1 square. But also, I'm threatening ideas of queen to g2, which is just mate. He has to defend mate. And he can't bring a rook to f2 because my bishop controls that square. That might be that might be the best thing for him, I don't know. So and it's difficult for my opponent to both defend g2. He also can't play rook g1 because the bishop controls that square. And and uh, defend defend f4. So my opponent plays the best move, rook g3. And it looks like white solved his problems. I'm gonna have to move my queen to keep an eye on the h4 pawn, keep an eye on the f4 pawn, and black could, white can now start striking back with moves like d4, and he's good. He can maybe double up on the g-file, f5 might come at some point, d5 might come at some point, so I need to be accurate again. And again, there is one move that wins the game for black. This is possible, it's the nicest move. The move is rook takes f4. Now, I'm kind of surprised this only gets a best move and not like at least a great move. Probably not a brilliancy, but I was, again, I spent 11 seconds on this. I'm down to five seconds now. I am so low on time, but I knew that I need to find these moves because otherwise white is going to win. Otherwise, unless I have this specific line, white's position is crushing. And rook takes f7 is a sucker punch because I'm threatening to take his rook. Knight takes, rook takes, rook g1, and rook takes g1, checkmate. And this bishop is the absolute hero. The h pawn keeps the king stuck on the back rank, so the king can't get out of the back rank. That's why h3 was so important because these ideas wouldn't work as the king could run to g2 in, mer in um, many variations. So, after rook takes f4, my opponent, the best way for him to combat this is to play queen takes f4. And after rook takes f4, rook takes g4, rook takes g4, and... I'm up a pawn in this position, but the computer gives minus 2.7. It thinks it's completely winning because of rook g2. These pieces are lining up. The king is still trapped. I still have ideas of mate, and d4 just can't be played. My pieces have got too much control. e5 is weak. d3 is weak. The second rank is very, uh, very weak. And my opponent's rook is still tied down to the defense of g1. So although it's only a pawn up position, it's completely crushing. My opponent did not find that. He spent all of two seconds, which, I mean, bro, you have over a minute. And I've just sacked my queen. Maybe he was just expecting this. I don't know. I don't know what he was expecting. But here it's just simply mate in free because rook takes f1 and i've effectively deflected this rook away this queen can't help with the defense and it's just simple back rank mate rook takes f1 knight takes f1 rook takes f1 rook g1 and rook takes g1 and this bishop and pawn are the absolute heroes of the position because for the longest time ever since h3 was played They've kept the king in a box and allowed these ideas to 
actually come to fruition. And so basically, bishop c5 only move, queen takes g4 only move, h3 only move, rook takes f4 only move, and rook takes f1. And I mean, I'm not going to count the next move, uh, the next two moves, because they're obvious. Um, but yeah, rook takes f4, very nice. I was very happy with this, especially considering my time situation. And yeah, that's the game. Went down the pawn in the opening, brought it back with some crazy attacking lines. Nice little queen sacrifice. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.